It's five o'clock on a Wednesday, and it's time for the Craig and Rado Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Rado. Welcome back to another review show right here on Magic TV. Absolutely, and I can promise you, absolutely, unequivocally, totally, without a shadow of a doubt, this review show is going to go without a hitch. This review show is not going to have any naughtiness, any craziness. We're not going to have any Nerf guns, any helicopters. We're not going to have any. Uh, punching, slapping, no Ghostbusters. We're going to have nothing. It's going to be normal because he's going to the House of Secrets soon to do a few shows at the House of Secrets. And I've told him that if he messes around in this review show, then he will not be allowed to take his uh, VR with him and he will have to go VRless. Are we going to be well behaved, Ryland? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. So... This is going to be the best review show that we've ever done For because you. it's going to be normal. For you. For me. Let's have a look at the first review. So first up, we have Toon Balloon by Gustavo Raleigh. Now, we first saw this at the Blackpool Magic Convention and you were walking past your mate Gustavo stand and he went, Ryland! And he never said anything to me because it's all about you. And, yeah, nobody, and, nobody cared about you. and he was doing his Toon Balloon thing. And then I, you were like, oh, I want to get one of those. And he just gave you one and signed it for you and everything, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so what is Toon Balloon? Well, Toon Balloon basically is a way of taking a balloon, not a helium balloon, just a normal blown up balloon, put it into a balloon holder. And once it's inside that balloon holder, um, you draw eyes on it don't you i mean you what you watch the tutorial you show a normal balloon there's nothing special about it you blow it up you put it in this holder and then you draw a face on this balloon mm -hmm. so you draw the eyes you draw the nose you draw the mouth you draw everything and then you turn it round, and then the balloon starts talking it's a little bit like the axtel um drawing board it's a little bit like that mm -hmm. you know like with the axtel drawing board you drew a face on it and the face started talking this is a similar sort of thing you draw yeah. a face on the balloon and the balloon starts talking mm -hmm. but at the end you can literally give them the balloon as a souvenir can't you mm -hmm. so the stick that you put the balloon in you can give them the stick can't you because you can get those sticks from everywhere because the gimmick is not the stick is it so you can actually make this whole balloon have it in the stick draw the face on it, do a ventriloquism routine, and then at the end, you can literally give them the balloon and and the face is, you know, normal. You've stolen the gimmick off and they can have it as a souvenir. Is that right? Is that fair to mm -hmm. say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, yeah. I said you had to be sensible, but I don't want you to be silent. Okay. If you don't actually give me your opinion, you won't get the VR either. I think you're very good. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, you watched the tutorial, not me. What mm -hmm. was the tutorial like? It was very good. It was very good. Are you going to say anything else other than it's very good? Um, he, he uses it for lots of different things. Like what? Talk uh, to me. He did a video where uh, there was this guy who used it to sing a happy birthday song. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I think I'll do that. You're going to use it to sing happy birthday? At a kid's party, yeah. At a kid's party. Uh, he also says you can do... Uh, uh, use yeah, a clip. You, if you use... Um, if you get one of the... If you get one of them, you can... If you get one of the special balloons, you can do a new one for a balloon. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and then you can do another thing with the Nintendo Switch and a little boy. Oh, yeah. Um, Headless Freddy. Uh, forgetful Freddy. Yeah. Yeah. And then... So you could use this balloon Space. and then put it in, do the Forgetful Freddy routine and use the same balloon for Forgetful Freddy. Got it, okay. Mm -hmm. Or do a needle through balloon with it. So you can build a bigger act around this whole thing, right? Now you did it for Instagram and you just put a really quick, simple routine uh, for your sister, didn't you? It was mm -hmm. kind of like based on a card trick. This was yeah. literally just for Instagram, wasn't it? So um, we'll play that just so you can see what the mouth looks like when he's doing it and so on and so forth. But this is a quick performance of the uh Please my sister Thea. Hi. Now I don't do card tricks, but I do have a friend that does. And uh Thea, what I want you to do is I'm gonna uh, just ripple through and I want you to say stop. Stop. Okay, that's your card? Yeah. Want you to look yeah. at it, you got the card, and we're gonna put that back into the middle. Now uh, I've got my friend here. Now this 
is Mr. Balloon. Now, obviously, Mr. Balloon isn't real because if he was real, his mouth his would mouth be... is moving. What do you mean his mouth is moving? His mouth is moving. That's ridiculous. His mouth can't be moving. His mouth is moving. No, it's not. Look, his mouth's not moving. Look, look, his mouth's not moving. Okay, but anyway, Mr. Balloon, his mouth is moving. What? Uh, okay. Well, we've got Mr. Balloon here. Uh, Mr. Balloon's trying to say something. What's he trying to say? Mr. Balloon says your card was the three of diamonds. Yes. Was it really? Yes. Give it up for Mr. Balloon, everybody. What? So, um, that was great. That was a great performance. I can't see that you would be doing a card trick in a kid's show. No. So, but I mean, it was. I'm not saying the happy birthday thing. Though. So, what is the happy birthday thing? You literally. Yeah, you just sing happy birthday using the balloon. Okay, so the balloon sings happy birthday. Yeah. Um, the kids sing it at the same time, and the balloon sings it, and everyone sings yeah, it. Yeah, he, he did. You know, though, he did it. He did it on a video, and like I think it was like a virtual thing. He sent it to the child. Oh right, okay, it was that's one of the virtual parties, yeah, and he used it to like sing happy birthday. He had like a massive like birthday band behind him. Because obviously, if you're a ventriloquist, if you vent, this is the perfect trick for you because you can literally take you a balloon, can sing happy birthday, blow it up, using you, a balloon. Yeah, you could do the whole vent act with a balloon if you wanted to. Give the balloon out as a souvenir at the end. My Ryland, balloon story. Yeah. <laughs> my, now Ryland doesn't vent. One day he nearly blew away. Yeah, I did. <laughs> as you can see, Ryland doesn't vent. Ryland has lots of very clever friends that do vent. vent. I don't uh, and actually, all of your friends that vent, their first name begins with H. Harry Piker and Henry Ferris. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. There's yeah. two? Uh, two. Two vents. Um, that's true. Yeah, I know. Two. Uh -huh, that's true. <laughs> I know it is. That's true. I bet you, Hen that's true. I bet you Henry and Harry have got this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> you, did you realise you were being a bit silly then? You mm -hmm. dialed it back. Yeah, I thought so. Mm -hmm. um, so this is... Uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? It's How very, easy is it to use? Very, How easy is it to use? It's literally just... Do, 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 use do, do, with your thumb. Do, 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 okay. do, do. And then, at the end, stealing the gimmick off in order to give them the balloon. That's an easy thing to do yeah, as well, I imagine. Yeah, you just go... Whoop. Okay. And then, and then you take your Sharpie and wipe them anymore. Okay. And then that's where you ditch it into the case mm -hmm. or wherever you got the Sharpie from. Yeah, what... Uh, what uh, Gustavo does is he takes the balloon, he draws the face on it, but without putting it on the stick or having the thingy on, and he throws it to the audience, like so they can bop it around and make sure it's completely normal. And then he, and then he gets it back, and then he says, "Oh, this mouth, there's a bit missing on the mouth," and, like puts it on and puts the stick on, and then and then it starts talking. So it's like the audience have checked. Oh, that's clever. Like so, that. like in your, in the, if you like in the House of Secrets, they can all just like bounce it around. No, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, and if you wanted to do a vent act with this and you don't vent, you could obviously have a track that you've like learned. So you could have a voice artist create the voice for your puppet and you could, you know, you could literally start the track. And a bit like in your Harry Potter act where everything's timed. So Dumbledore's yeah. speaking and you're doing the thing when Dumbledore's you know speaking. Dumbledore, it's Mr. Clueless. Yeah. Well, when the, Mr. The, M. Clueless. When, when the Hogwarts teacher is talking and you're doing whatever the Hogwarts teacher's doing, you could have a, you could have a track where literally... The, the the balloon starts speaking and you know when that is so you could actually have i just came up with the greatest name for matt what matt bag matt bag i'm sure he'll <laughs> love that right i'm gonna give this uh 95 i love this i don't know how often i do it but i would definitely think of a way to put this into a kid's show you do a lot do of kids shows matt bag would do it? yes um he doesn't vent no maybe you could do a mind reading balloon trick <gasps> you, you know. i'm telling well, I can't be silly. I'm going to tell him that there's a new trick that you can use a balloon to speak and then think of, and then I'll say, here's a challenge. Do a, vin, uh, do a mind reading trick with it. Yeah, that would be an interesting thing to do. Um, yeah, I'm sure Matt Bag could do it. I'm sure Matt could. I'm so, sure Matt Bag could do it. Okay. So what, uh, what are you giving it? Um, I, I think I'm going to do it. Are you? Yeah. You do a lot of kids shows. Yeah. This would be in I a kids show. I think I'm going to do it in the House of Secrets, but they're like smacking it all around. So you sure it's normal. So you would do this in a House of Secrets show as well? Yeah, I think I would. Okay. So and it's small as well. It's literally just that flat thing. Yeah. Well, that's great because the next time you go to the House of Secrets, you're putting your whole show into one case, kid. 
We carry so much stuff around the country. Wait, here. if I do actually put it in one case, that means I barely have to set anything up, though. Let's go! <laughs> we can just, like, go there one minute before the doors open and just go, stand, case, table, open up, I'm set. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Do you, you haven't given it a mark yet? 99%. 99% from him. Uh, it's a fantastic trick if you're a kid's entertainer, especially if you vent. This should be a required purchase. Uh, a couple of people online have said something about angles and it doesn't look good from the side. I don't think it's a problem at all. I, I think it looks I would, fine. I, would put, uh, it, I might agree with them just because like, from the side, it does kind of look like the mouth is hanging off the balloon. Yeah, I don't think it's too much of an issue. I don't issue, think it's though, too it? much of an issue, though. But, I mean, obviously, in a kid's show, you can control the audience, Happy can't you? Happy birthday! Yeah, they're, they're, they're in front of you, aren't they? So you would obviously have the balloon. No what? No kid is at the side of you when you're doing a kid's show. They're all sitting down watching you from the front, so I can't see that being a problem. But, yeah. okay, I don't think it's an issue. He does, so there you go. Bear that in mind. Okay, so the next step, uh, the next review, we have Deal or Steal by... I've got his name written down, because I forget. Carl... Crichton Prince. Carl Crichton Prince, Deal or prince? Steal? No, I don't think so. Is it the so, Prince of Wales? No. So this is a trick that he has created uh, that has been put out through MindFX. If you want to get this trick, you're going to have to go to MindFX. And what this trick is, basically, is it's a game show. It's a game show. It is? Where you can do it on a game show? You, it's a game show where the you're going to give... The magician goes yeah. to the game show and performs this. You're going to give the audience or a member of the audience the chance to win a prize and you've got a whole bunch of envelopes. And all prizes can be good. And and yeah, you I mean... You can make them so they do win something. Well, let's go. Let's have I a look. Think, I yeah. think when I do this, I'm going to take one of the things with me and I know what I'm going to take. Okay. Well, first of all, let's just show you doing a performance of this to Thea, okay? So we brought Thea... I don't know if I should have done it like that, though. We brought Thea in. She was looking at this for the first time. This is the performance of Thea. When you've had a look at this performance, we'll talk about uh, about the pros and cons. After you've watched the performance, just forget it ever happened. Hi, my name's Ryan the Kid Magician, and I'm here with uh, my sister Thea. Hi. Okay, so do you want a chance to win some money? Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to play a game called Deal or Steal, okay? So, what we do is we want you to take these cards and deal them into two rows of five, okay? Five. So, one, two... two. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, which one do you want to deal? Which one? Do you, which which side? Which side do you want to deal? Um, let's go for this one. This one. So you want to deal uh, these ones. Yes. So you're going to deal these ones, but you're going to steal these ones, okay? Yep. So these are ones that you're going to steal. Yep. So you want to take them. I want to give them a shuffle. Well, let's look at the prizes you could have won on this part. So you could have won twenty-five pounds. That's a good one. You could have won. Could have won ten pounds. You could have won ten p. You could have won five p. Yeah. You could have won. A hundred pounds? What? I missed out on that. You missed out on a hundred pounds, and that's the highest one, unfortunately. But anyway, these all shuffled. Yeah. I mean, are you sure these all shuffled? Yeah. Okay. So these are the ones that you chose to um, steal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to. I'm going to give you this invisible dice. And I want you to take them and roll it on the table. What number did you land on? There's six sides. What number did you uh, land on? Six. Six. Are you yeah. sure you landed on six? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna deal the cards and we're gonna take the sixth card. Okay. So yeah. one, two, two three, three, four, five, five six. six. So this is six. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna take this one. We're gonna put it there. And we're gonna look at all the prizes you could have won. So you could have won fifty pounds. You could have won twenty p. Not that good. You could have won... 5p is the worst. Yeah, 5p is the worst. You could have won... 175 pounds. You could have won... 50p. Did you want to see what you won? Yeah. You won... An apple. <laughs> what? So why did I have to forget that the performance ever happened, right? The ending... The ending with the uh, <laughs> naffle. So, yeah, so what you basically have with this is you get 10 envelopes 
and you get a whole bunch of cards with different monetary values on. Now, all of the values are in pounds or pence. So if you're in America or in a different country, you might need to substitute those cards out, uh, and write them on blank card stock or something. That's something you need to bear in mind. Um, but every you, time you I get... do this, every time I do this, I'm taking a bag of five Brussels sprouts. Well, yeah, because here's the thing: what he's talking about is they're always going to end up on one particular envelope yeah. with one particular card in, and it's totally and under you your can control. Make the envelope, whatever. And you want. well, yeah, and well, what... you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. Uh, but here's the thing. You get in the bag a whole bunch of final cards. Yeah, you've got so the final cards piece, you got you got a one p sprouts, naffle, not a sausage. You got that one that says nothing, nyada, nyet. Yeah, nothing, nil. Other many words for nothing basically. Yeah, and you've got two blank ones that you can literally write your own thing on if you want to as well. Um, so if you've got you know something that you think would fit your act that maybe you want them to could, win, maybe you could draw a picture of a car on there. And then, and then, and then come out and bring them a Lego car. <laughs> Very possibly. The point that we're trying to make here is that... I'm taking a bag of Brussels sprouts. I, 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 you can't stop me. I'm not going to stop I'm you. I'm taking this to the House of Secrets and I'm bringing a bag of Brussels sprouts. I'm, I'm, I will be all in on that. Here's the thing. This is a very, very, very commercial routine. This is the sort of thing that would work close up. You saw Ryland performing it close up. You've just mentioned the House of Secrets. I think this could be in a parlour or a stage performance. If you were going to do it in the House of Secrets... I could do it like I do the Cups and Balls. If you were going to do it in the House of Secrets, I would suggest getting some of those stands that Alakazam sell, where you can literally stand things up. You have little stands for your table so that they elevate the cards, they elevate the envelopes vertically so people can see yeah, them. Yeah, or you could do the thing that Rush uses, you know, the slanted table. Yeah, the slanted table would also work. but Because, I would... because we're going to the House of Secrets, we might as well use that. But I would suggest getting... Alakazam's thing because yeah. they're really cool. Yeah, they are really cool. But the whole and the Alakazam close up cases are really cool. They are. You've got one, I know. Uh the point Yeah, they're, they're, they're like just the perfect close up case. They've got everything. They are very good. They've got pockets, they've got sections. Can I point out that this is not a review of the Alakazam close up case and we'll we'll be doing that review at some point soon, so don't you know get too excited don't about that. Don't spoil it. Yeah, don't spoil it. So Well I'm getting some these these envelopes, so you've got 10 envelopes. Now, I love the procedure that you go through in order One, two, to get three, to this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. I love the procedure. It feels really fair. As you saw in the performance there, they can literally, it feels like they can eliminate any number. The invisible die thing where they're throwing the die and any number comes up. It's all really fair. But you are in absolute control of everything the whole time. Uh, there is a mark on one of the envelopes and it is very obvious to see. You can see it a mile off. Even if you've got bad eyesight, you can see it. And this just works really, really well. It It's the sort of trick that will play big to a big audience, but it's also the sort of thing that would be working really uh, in a close-up environment. Obviously, if you're doing it in close-up, you're going to need table space to put it out. But I think you could probably do it walk around by having two people hold their hands out and you start off by saying to you, saying to the person, look, deal them into two piles. I think you could get into two people's hands. I think this would work walk around, absolutely. But I think for a restaurant worker, this would be great. I think for a parlor show magician, this would be great. It's mentalism, but it's really fun. It's got that really nice game show feel to it. And all of the reveals at the end are just really clever. I love the... The principles behind this that make it work. The envelopes yeah. are really well done. The cards are really well done. You can see a lot of thoughts gone into this. Uh, I've never seen Carl uh, before, but the tutorial, it's very, very simple, but it, that's all it needs to be. He goes through everything. I would have liked to have seen a live performance. There was no live performance on there. I would like to see how this plays for a real audience, but I've, d I've been doing magic long enough to know that this will play really, really well. I love this. Yeah, this is very good. Anything you want to add? I've kind of covered everything, but... Uh, I don't really think there is anything to add. It's all examinable. Everything's examinable. Everything is examinable. It's instantly reset. You just put everything back in the envelopes and you reset, mm -hmm. ready to go again. I love all this. of these envelopes would fit into one pocket. So if the you only problem to do it, is, what happens good. if you accidentally get it wrong and you don't end up with two? Well, and it ends up with number seven. <coughs> uh, well, <laughs> and number seven has got £100. Pounds. I know, you need to practice, man. I, I, I've, I've never got it wrong though. I know. Well, it's very easy to do. I, I, as long as you're concentrating, I can't see how it possibly could go wrong. Are you being silly? No. Okay, good. Um, if um, 
Yeah, I can't. If you practiced it, I can't see how it would go wrong because it's completely self-working. It, well. uh, it works itself. It won't go it's wrong. Brilliant. It'll go well. So, what are you giving it? Oh, and by the way, one other thing. Check out Ryan's Instagram. He filmed this again with Thea, and he got the Brussels sprouts ending. And, no, the one piece. Oh, the one piece. Sorry. And when he filmed it again. He used a different thing. He just used five envelopes and you did the quinter force yeah, by Yeah, I did, I did £25, £50, £75, £100. Pounds. They're all good prices. And then... Because you sent Thea pin. away and you said, come back in, I'll give you another chance. And I promise you I'll put money inside each envelope. Uh, and so she did it again and she got the penny. But you used a completely different technique. You used the quinter force. Yeah. In fact, and let's then, just quickly play that. Hang on, I'll play that yeah. for you very okay, quickly. Okay, so I've got my sister Thea here. Hi. And I have five uh, envelopes here. Each number is one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to name a number between 10 and 50. 10 and 50, any number. Uh, 19. 19. Are you sure you want 19? Yeah. Okay. Let's count. Are you ready? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Let's see what you could have won. You could have won a £25. Could have won a uh, 50 Could have won 75 Could have won 100 But you won a 1p. <laughs> Well, you did, that was your performance. It was great. It was your idea to use the quinter force for it. The point is, if you don't want to carry all ten, yes, that's what you said. Uh, if you don't want to carry all ten envelopes around with you, you could just carry five envelopes around, and you're still able to do it using Phil Smith's quinter force. Yeah, and then I really annoyed Thea. I really annoyed Thea because I even said, "Look, I'll take them all out," and I because like for the because when I get it, I did the Br Brussels sprouts for it, and I did the quinter with the Brussels sprouts. And then I took them all out, and she ended up with the Brussels sprouts. And I'm like, right, you can see the Brussels sprouts are right there. Name any number. And I did it again, and she landed on the Brussels sprouts. And I'm like, Thea, what are you doing? She named another number, Brussels sprouts. She named another, Brussels, named another, Brussels. And she's like, right, I quit, and she just walked off. <laughs> anyway, I love this. I swear, I'm... at one point, I thought she was going to go 11, 12. 13, and she was going to go to one by one. Well, that's the power of Phil Smith's Quinter Force. 90% what are you giving it? Uh, I'm going to give it 100 million percent. Wow. Tuning. You love this, times don't you? Times tuning. Times tuning. Times infinity squared. Tuning. Cubed. Cubed, awesome. cubed, cubed. See, 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 like, no, it's love to be signed. Yeah, times that's cubed. Okay. That's great. That's a great. Plus tuning. That's a great, absolutely fantastic mark there, mate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's great. You can get it from Mind Effect. Well done. Carl. Carl. Crichton. Crichton. Prince. Prince of Wales. Not Prince of Wales, just Prince. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Carl, if you're watching this. He's obnoxious. <gasps> I'm, not I'm not being silly. I'm not being silly. VR. I'm not being silly. Cutting the VR off. I'm not, I'm not being silly. Let's move on I'm to the next not, review. Okay, so next up we have Chroma by Mark Lemon. Chroma, Chroma, Chroma. Chroma, for me, is probably the best EDC trick that's come out this year. Yeah, cause you're, cause you're, cause you're an illusionist and a closet worker. And wait, no, this is the wrong trick. What are you talking I was about? Still, I was talking about the other green lemon trick. No, dude, we reviewed that a few <laughs> weeks ago. Chroma, the Stroop test by Mark Lemon with the colours on the cards. I thought you said green lemon. No, Roland. Oh my gosh. Right, Mark Lemon, not Green Lemon. Green Lemon is Sven. He makes the close-up pads. <laughs> he did the tiny grand illusion. Mark Lemon no, is the insane little, bald little, guy that keeps bringing out stuff that's awesome, but is also just super clever. Anyway, look, look Mark Lemon. Mark Lemon has oh, brought out this silly. trick called Chroma. If you didn't see the map test a few weeks ago, I actually showed this to I Matt. Didn't, I didn't see the map no, test. you didn't. You were at school. Uh, but I'm going to have Rylan perform this to me. Rylan. Wait, what is school? It's Tuesday. No, it's, it's Wednesday. It's Easter, dude. We're filming this in the Easter it's holidays. Easter. Not Easter today, but it's the Easter. It's Let's have Easter. a look at Rylan what doing a performance of this. Because it's not till okay, five. So I've got my dad behind the camera, and I've got a strip test here. So, uh, Dad, what I want you to do is I want you to think of a colour, and I want you to find it on here, printed in. What? What's the strip test? Uh, it's, uh, it's how clever you are, okay? Okay. Okay, so I want you to find your colour printed in black. Find it printed in black, got it. Yeah, okay. I want you to find your colour printed in blue. Uh, 
um, printed in blue. Yep. Yeah, got it. Okay, and find your colour printed in green. Got it. Okay. Uh, find your colour printed in red. Got it. Okay, right, and I'm going to tell you that your colour, well, you got 16 seconds, so if you're not intelligent and you picked the colour, well, if you got 16, it means you're not intelligent if you picked yellow. I picked yellow and I am intelligent. No, you're not. It proves that you're not intelligent. Whoa! Okay, so that was a performance of Chroma. What you just saw there, I think, this is probably one of the best EDCs I've seen in the last few months. You can just have this one credit card in your mm -hmm. wallet, and it's is in it your credit wallet. Card? It's well, it's a credit card size thing. It's, it's a, a plastic card. Test. Yeah, but it's the size of a credit card. It fits into your wallet, or it fits into your phone case, or it fits into your pocket. That's if your wallet's not one like that. And instantly, you've got a really cool hook because everybody, when you bring up a Stroop test and it's an intelligent test, they, they, everyone gets really interested in that. I did the but first then, presentation on you. But when you do it, like, it's just impossible. It fooled me the first time I saw it. It fooled you the first time you saw it. It fooled Matt the first time Matt saw it. I think this is absolutely... No, it is. It's that simple... What's well, it called? You don't want to talk about what the principle is at play here. But no, yeah, that, it's, don't, that, don't. it's that simple principle. It's a very simple principle on that steroids. That everybody knows, but it's like it's just like it's gone on steroids. up a million levels. It has gone up a million levels. It's like it's been playing uh, Wider Worlds and it's just got like a million points. Yeah, it's amazing. It's the, the pure definition of pack small plays big. Now, on the one hour tutorial, Mark hey, goes through... Hey, why don't we take that to House of Secrets? Yeah, you could do. No, that's a close one. Mark goes through a bunch of stuff that you can do with this. So he talks about how to do design duplications. He talks about how to do um, reframing with it. He talks about how to use it to do a one ahead style thing. If you're a mentalist, this is an incredible tool. The amount of times I've seen people online say, hey, what's the best way to force a colour? Well, the best way to force a colour, well, you're not forcing a colour, but what you are is you're having them think of a colour and you're immediately going to know what the colour is. And it doesn't feel do you procedural. Mean, what's the easiest way to do a street test? Yeah. This is the best Stroop test. Yeah, I mean, I love Nicholas Mavresis and David Jonathan's Stroop test that came out years ago uh, through Penguin. It's great, but this is the best use of the Stroop test presentation I've ever seen. Best this is great. It's 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 a plastic card. It's going to last forever. It's going to, you know, if you get water over it or beer over it or something, you're just going to wipe it off. And it's not really so much about revealing the colour. Yes, you can do that. The way that you saw Ryan do it, you could literally just go, you're thinking of blah, but... Which means you're unintelligent. It does. But there's so many other better ways to do it. And if you watch the tutorial, you're going to get a ton of ways that you can actually do this that is going to really mess with people's minds. I'm going to give this 120%. I think before this is great. You say, before I say what I'm going to do, I just thought of the best presentation. Go ahead. Because you know what their colour is. Yes. If I'm doing it to a friend that I know, that like, I've got a good relationship with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if you're unintelligent, you picked yellow, which I'm pretty sure is what you picked. But if you're intelligent, you picked blue. But I'm pretty sure you picked yellow. Yellow, <laughs> yellow. You're so mean to your friends. Um, <laughs> I'm giving it 100%. You're my friend and I'm mean to you. Yes, frequently. Um, well, I can't pick it up. <laughs> no, you can't. Remember, no VR. Hundred percent for me. What are you giving it? Hmm. They give it hundred percent plus tulin times twenty million. That's a really good mark as well. Wow, Mark Lemon, you've come up with what I think to be the best EDC that's come out this yeah, year. Yeah, this is like the best EDC ever. It is. It's perfect. It's just one little card you put so in your like, wallet. You're good to go. You just put it in your wallet, and it's like, right, I can do. I can. I can go up to anyone and do this trick. It's like the best trick ever. Yeah, I love it. So, right. it's killer. It's awesome. Let's move on. So, the final trick that we're looking at today is one that's been very heavily hyped up. This is one that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, and it is Adrian Vega's bottle. Now, if you don't know what the bottle is, the idea, very, very simply, is, it is imagine a card to wallet, but with a bottle. And that's what you have here. So, you have uh, somebody pick a card, they sign the card, they lose it into the pack, and then you bring a bottle out during the course of the presentation. And when you turn the bottle around, 
inside the bottle is their signed card. You can then unscrew the bottle, you can take the card out by taking a pair of tweezers or forceps or putting your finger in and pulling it up and you can give them the card as a souvenir. Now the cool thing is the bottle, um, okay, right, here's the, here's the thing. You couldn't give, a lot of people have said, is it examinable? You can't give the bottle to somebody and say, examine it with a fine tooth comb. Because if you did, they might find what the secret yeah, is. You just say, have a quick look at Yeah, book. having said that, when I bought this, I never watched the trailer beforehand. When I bought this, I opened it up and I did the first thing I did. I looked at it to see if I could find anything. And it just looked like a bottle of tablets. I couldn't find a gimmick in there at all. And I was looking around all sides. I couldn't find a gimmick. Um, Even to be blind, no, 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 no. It's because no, it's of how it's built. It's very, 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 very well done. It's very, now, very well done. But if done, somebody, but you're blind. if somebody looked at it for long enough, they would see something. However, the way that Daddy, the handling. If you didn't see it. How many fingers am I holding up? Four. Now the way. <laughs> now, the, now the way that the routine is constructed, it really feels like. The bottle has been examined because the bottle is put down on the table they can see it from all four sides there's nothing to hide there's no angle issues or anything you could even have somebody hold their hand out and hold the bottle like that and you could give them the bottle to hold they can you can get them to unscrew the bottle uh you can get them to turn it around you can get them to put their finger in to pull the to pull the card out uh, they feel like they've touched and felt and examined this bottle so examinability really honestly isn't an issue yeah. now on the tutorial um adrian goes through a bunch of different ways to perform this i threw a really quick presentation together for you guys and which you're going to see in a second but i haven't worked this yet but i do plan on working it i think this is brilliant because this can just sit in your back pocket and when it's in your back pocket you are good to go you can have it back there and you can go into it whenever you want to. So whenever you want to, you can have somebody pick a card. You don't need a table. You can have somebody sign a card. You can go into your pocket, give them the bottle. And after a bit of by play, you can show that the card's inside the bottle. Now he goes through a bunch of different routines. There's a cool routine where the entire deck ends up turning into jokers. There's a bunch of routines with jokers actually. There's another routine. There's a ton of different routines. He teaches everything. It's really well explained. There's live performances. You can tell that this is something that Adrian has worked in and then some uh, but I'm going to do a really quick presentation of this now um, uh, which is kind of now please notice I filmed this sitting down so I had the um, bottle in a case off to my side and I went into the case to get the bottle and I bought it back out by the way if you were doing parlor or a formal close-up show you could absolutely do that you could literally have a case to one side in a cabaret or something you could go into the case take the bottle and bring it out and that would work perfectly well However, you don't have to reach to a box like I did in this performance. I did that because I was sitting Why down. Are you using so many words? I could. You. Got, I want people to understand that this is a commercial I trick for a walk around You're performer. Speaking too fast and using too many words. This is a commercial trick for a walk around performer. You can't. You don't need to reach off camera to get anything. You don't need to reach into a box to get anything. It can literally be in your back pocket or your inside jacket pocket or your outside jacket pocket or your trouser pocket no or your jeans pocket. And you can take it out and you can give it them. You don't. I. I. I really I want to explain this. Well, let's have a look at the performance. Uh, right, come and have a look at this. This is a deck of playing cards. I do apologise for the terrible camera work. Unfortunately, Ryland uh, is rubbish. So, Rai, normally I would not get a chance to see the card, but as you're behind the camera, I will sign the card for you. I have a pen. Which card would you like? That one. That one. There's a few of them, right? That one. Which one? That one. Right. Which which card do you want? That one there. Which card would you like, Rai? The Ten of Cups. Thank you. Well, that, <laughs> that one. That took a while, but we got there in the end. Right. Ten of Clubs. Right. So, I'm going to write your name on here, which is Annoying... Little monster, for that is your name. Right, so the card gets put back, I don't know, around about there. Do you see the card there, Ryland? Mm -hmm. Good, and we'll leave it in the... You know, actually, I'm going to put it a bit further down just to make sure that it really is lost in the deck. Now, a lot of people think that the magic that I do is all to do with sleight of hand and the hand being quicker than the eye. Is that what you think, right? 
A lot of people think that because I can like cut the cards with one hand and I can shuffle the cards with one hand and I can do all of that fancy stuff, they think that's how the tricks work. But that's not the case. Would you like to know how it works? Yeah. I have special pills. Now, you're not old enough for this, but there's a film called Limitless. And in this film, there's this man that finds these pills and he takes them and it makes his brain operate like 20 or 30 times better than anybody else's brain. So he can do things super fast and he can pick up skills super fast and he can basically work out anything. So I'm going to show you what these pills look like. I've got quite a few of them. I've got a stash over here. This, these are my pills. I have to take one before I do a magic show. But when I take one of these pills... It allows me to find anybody's card immediately. Would you like to see how it works? Mm -hmm. Watch. I've already took a pill. I've already took a pill. So I should be okay. I don't need to take another one. But watch. All I have to do is cut in the right place. And because I've taken one of those pills and my brain's operating so fast, my fingers can actually feel uh, uh, the ink that's on, on your card because you wrote Annoying Little Monster. And then that allows me to cut directly to your... Oh my god. Sorry, hang on, the pills haven't kicked in yet. Let me just. Uh... <sighs> okay. Did you really take a pill? Yeah, I did take a pill. Yeah. If I cut, what happens is my fingers operate at such a level that I'm able to. Nope. Oh, hang on, I might need to take one more of these. Uh, just one more. Just one. Oh, you don't take more than one because uh, my brain will explode. So just one. There we go. Okay, so if I take one of these pills. Mm, right. Mm, I can feel it, right? I can feel the synapses firing. I can feel it. I can feel everything. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. It's amazing. I can just literally... Oh, boom. I got it. I just needed an extra pill. The, the queen of, of clubs. Not my god. I don't understand. These pills are meant to work. You know what? I don't understand. I think I'm going to have to take them back to the place that I got them from because obviously these pills do... No, they don't work. I know they don't work. I'm really sorry. Look at the pills. I, I can see the pills, right? They're not worked. So I'm really sorry. Turn the pills sorry. around. Sorry? Turn the pills around. Turn the pills around. Yeah. Look, there's nothing. I've told you. There's absolutely nothing. I've Sideways. Turned... I'll turn it there. All of... There you go. Turn it like that. Oh, sorry, the other way. Look, there's nothing, right? There's nothing. There's nothing. Look These at pills. The pills. Are, I'm looking at the look pills, at the front right? Of the pills. I'm looking at the front of the pills. Look, look at the back I'm of looking the... at the front of the pills right there, oh, Ryan. Look at the there's back nothing. Of the, pills. I'm, the back of the pills. This would be what? <laughs> well, I guess the pills really do work then. Oh my god, that's a miracle. Wow. I didn't find the pills. I didn't find the card. The pills did, but that's good enough for me. So there's a performance. And when I was performing it too, you seem to understand what I was talking about, you little sausage. Um, anyway, what you just saw, I love the delay of the reveal. I love the fact that you put the bottle down and everyone thinks it's just a bottle. Um, and um, and then it's only when you turn it around that they realise the card's in there. It, it really kind of gives a big disconnect between the moment of magic, the actual moment of magic, and the perceived moment of magic. It, you know, the move is done, but then the reveal happens so much later. The other thing is, you know when you do card to wallet? Well, you wouldn't because you don't do card tricks. But when you do card to wallet, and you take that wallet out at the end of the routine, there's a very good chance at that point that people realise that the card's going to be in the wallet. Yeah. You take a bottle out and you give it to a spectator to hold on or you put it in their hand or something like yeah. that. No one is going to think that that card is going to yeah. end up inside that bottle. Yeah. Um, it's a big surprise yeah. and that's what I really like about yeah. that. And even though it's a big bottle, yeah. it doesn't take up that much pocket space, yeah. which I think is really important as yeah. well. Um, the one other yeah. thing that I'll say is you just saw the performance. Yeah. I'm playing around with the presentation for this at the moment because I'm yeah. definitely going to start doing this. Yeah. Stop it. And... Um, I really like the idea of using Limitless as a presentation because that's a film a lot of people are aware of and you don't even know what Limitless is. Good uh, idea. But, uh, you know, I think that as a, as a presentational point, I think it will work really well. So that's how I'm planning on doing this. Um, my, you know, I've got, I've got a few different ideas and I'll share those with you as I continue to work on this. But I think this is amazing. I love this. I'm definitely 100%, million percent going to do this. I'm going to give this 120%. I think this is brilliant. It's definitely going to my act. What do you think, Mr. I Don't Do Card Tricks? Uh, I don't think I'm going to do it.
just because you have to use a deck of cards. Yes, you do. I don't use cards unless I'm collecting them. So what are you giving it? Or just playing with moves. So what are you giving it? Give it 79% because I think it's really good. Okay. Uh, One thing to note is... Hang on, hang on. I came up with the best idea. Go on. 79% plus Julie. Okay. That, 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 that's, that's clever, isn't it? That's very it, clever. It, it's not above, it's not above 79. Okay. It's just a plus Julian. 79% plus Julian. Um, one thing Julian. that's worth noting that I, I should mention is obviously the routine that you just saw and a lot of the routines that Adrian teaches requires a palm and he goes into how to palm a card in great detail but there is a section on the download as well that is all about how to do it if you don't want to palm. I don't think that is as good by any stretch of the imagination and he actually says that himself as well but if you don't palm it's not a reason to not get this because there are other options on there as well. Anyway uh, I think it's an amazing trick 120% for me 79% plus Julian for Ireland. Uh, let's wrap this whole thing up. There's no Risha in the bag. There's no Risha in the bag. There's no Risha in the bag. First time ever. I'm excited. It is another review show in the bag. Thank you once again for joining me right here on Magic TV. Uh, don't forget, you want to follow Ryland on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. You can do so by going to www. Uh, you can go to, uh, sorry, Ryland the Kid Magician on all of those platforms. Here's the ultimate test. As I've been so sensible. Here's the ultimate test. You oh, can go and check. No, no, no. <laughs> You can go check out the Netrix. I'm just like not going to listen. You can go to the Netrix by going to www.thenetrix.com. Can I say a joke? Yeah. Because I've been so good. Yeah. Okay, got two. Go on then. Wait, it's actually a riddle. Go on. What's, uh, what's black when you buy it, red when it's being used, and grey when it's thrown away? I don't know. It's a riddle. Grey. I don't know. Charcoal. Uh, charcoal. It's black when you oh, buy it. God. Red when it's being used and grey when it's run away. Okay. Here's the second one. One night, a maid, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, cook, and and something else. Forgot. This is a great one. Yeah, a maid. A cook and a sweep, a chimney sweeper. Okay. I'm just going to come up with characters. Yeah, so one night, a maid, a, a, a cook and a chimney sweeper went to a hotel. What were they doing in a hotel? No, they just wanted to go to a hotel. What, there, all three so, of them? Yeah, there was just a break. Are they like friends? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one night, a cook, a maid... And the chimney sweeper. Is this like in the olden days? Because we don't really have yeah, maids. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They went. Well, they went to a hotel. When they booked. What the was room, the name of the hotel? I don't know. Well, when they when they got to the room, it's for four people. Who was the fourth person? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What were they doing in the, hotel, the same hotel room? They're friends. Right. Did they share the same bed? I just said there's four beds. Oh, there's four beds. Listen, listen. So one night. Yeah. A maid, a maid, a cook, a cook, and chimney sweeper. Chimney sweeper went to a hotel. What's the name of the hotel? Uh, I don't know. The the I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so a maid, a cook, and a chimney sweeper went to the I don't know hotel. When they when they booked the room though, it was for four people. Why? Who was the fourth person? Whoever booked the room messed up. No. I don't know. Listen to it again. One night. Yeah. A maid, a cook. And a chimney sweeper, chimney sweeper, went to the hotel. Right. When they booked the hotel, it was four people. Who right. was the fourth person? I don't know. Tell me. The night. Oh my god. Listen, look. I, I didn't say it. I was using the fingers to trick you. I said, I said a maid, a cook, and a chimney sweeper, which is three people. But I said one night, a maid. A chimney sweeper and a cook went to the same hotel with their friends. When they booked the room, at four people, who's the four person? The night. Not not the N-I-G-H-T. The K-N-I-G-H-T. Ha. So it's like one night. 
Why didn't they all just have their own room? Because they're friends. And, it, and it's cheaper when they share the room. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Did they have bunk beds and stuff? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. It was, it was, it, it had a double bunk bed. A double bunk bed? Yeah. Wow. Okay, well. This is like four, four beds stacked up on each other. That's a big bed. That's <laughs> a big bunk bed. Right. It was I a tall room. One of them fell off. Did they? It Which was one? night, so it was in armour. Oh, so it's, it's not a problem. It's, it's not a problem. He's a, he's a boy. At this point, we're talking he just to ourselves. To... <laughs> Nobody's listening to this crap. Nobody's listening anymore. <laughs> Look, we'll see you again next week. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Wyland. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. We're going to go to TGI now. I decided. It's TGI. It's, it's TGI. So that's where you want to go. Yeah, I, w I want to get. I want to get the sesame tea. He, he got greater depth in I'm his mom. mock sats in every single subject. Yeah. Uh, he bossed it. He got like higher marks than anybody no, could have imagined. Like, I think it was me and two other people. Or yeah, but you said bossed it. Yeah. So he gets to go for lunch anyway he wants to and he's picked TGIs. So we're going for TGIs. We'll see you again soon. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm. Say bye. Bye. Are you being sensible? Yeah. Okay. I'm being sensible. Let's go.